to yep. was said or hey can you go back to that or if you have to leave early whatever the case may be i will send you a replay uh, with all the links all the bells all the whistles that i mentioned on this session so that's in play and then like i said um well not, not even like i said whether you ever decide to sign up for art storefronts or not um I want the session to be valuable to you. I hope you learn something. I hope you'll leave with something that you can actually bolt into your business. I've been doing this for close to 10 years. I have data on 12,000 people uh, that are actively trying to market and grow art and photography businesses. And so I get to look at a lot of things that work, a lot of things that don't. Uh, and, and I like to speaking uh, to all of those things. So um, any questions that you guys have, whether it's art storefronts related or not, I'd be more than happy to answer those. Peter's asking me how long it's gonna last. Uh, it'll, 2.30 I think is probably, I'm in, I'm in Pacific time, so an hour and a half, I would say, usually, um, depending, depending, depending. But if you've got questions, Peter, feel free to, to, to fire them off. I like keeping things, you know, loose. Um, so I think I think as we're, we're all sitting here and we're contemplating 2024 and what it looks like, and you're all here because you want to have a different kind of a 2024 than you had in 2023. You want to see your art of photography business growing. I like talking about that as a high level, okay? Um, talking about sort of the nuts and bolts of how that how that goes down in today's day and age, and some things to be thinking about. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll keep it very succinct on on three three different levels, right? First one's the business model, and I think it's important to have an open and frank discussion about a business model that actually works in today's day and age. Um, you know, all of you guys, by show of hands, if I said, "Hey, I can get you into an art gallery right now." They are going to sell and market all of the art for you, and you're not going to have to do anything but just create it. Every single solitary one of you would raise your hands and say, that is what I want. Deep down, that's what all artists and photographers want. They want to go through the gallery model, right? Um, and that's kind of what's been sold to you guys is, is the best way to do it. And the thing about the gallery model that no one really talks about, and let's use some real numbers to give it some teeth, Let's say that you are selling six figures worth of art in an art gallery every single solitary year. So you're selling $100,000 worth of art. After the gallery takes its cut, that's 50%. Now you're down to $50,000 a year that you are making. Then you have to subtract your expenses, your material, your supplies, your studio, where you went to go take your photos, all of those parts in the business. And that's what you're left with. And so very quickly, even if you're selling six figures a year in a gallery, you're down to like you know, $35,000, $30,000 a year that, that you're taking home. Add insult to injury, you have no idea who's purchasing your work. And this is really the fundamental biggest problem. Um, art and photography businesses, wall art businesses, are collector-driven businesses. What is a collector? Let's define that. A collector is someone that's going to be with you for life and is going to purchase in upwards of seven-plus pieces of art from you over the course of a lifetime. Where's my book that I love highlighting? I took this from. Bear with me, it's a good prop, hold on. So I took this concept from Wyland. Wyland is the whale guy. This is the book that he's written. It's a fantastic book. I believe that you can get it for free online if you want to download it as an audio book. Um, most people would say I think Wyland's number one, number two, number three best-selling artist in the United States. He, does, he has an interesting model, but I think he's selling 50 or $60 million worth of his art a year. How does Wyland define a collector in this book? He defines it as someone that's going to purchase uh, in upwards of seven plus pieces of art from him over the course of a lifetime. And when you've been doing this for any long period of time, you realize that if you don't know who's purchasing your work, i.e. when you're in a gallery or an on online marketplace, uh, you have no ability to retain their contact information. You have no ability to communicate with them. You have no ability to market to them. And thus, you'll never know who your collectors are. Collectors represent essentially the base salary to an art business. They represent the 401k, if you like, the social security. It's a salary that you guys get paid just for creating. But the only way that you can collect a, or, or build a collector list, I should say, is if you know who's purchasing your work, okay? So that's number one way to build an art of photography business today. And, and you know, one of the things that I like to stretch it a little bit further, it's like at the, the $100,000 a year revenue in the art gallery, the, the picture's not so rosy, let's double, let's triple it, let's say it's $300,000 a year. So you're selling $300,000 a year in a gallery, which means you're taking 150 home minus your expenses, let's say you're making $125,000 a year. That number, the people that are at that level is less than one-tenth of 1% 1 of artists and photographers. That's how small the number is. It's sort of like the people that really make a tremendous living in the art gallery model are kind of like the people that you know play a sport versus professional athletes. Like those are what the numbers are. Those are what the odds say. 
Um, and, and, and I don't think those are particularly great odds. And that's why I'm not exactly the biggest, um, you know, the biggest advocate for the particular gallery model. So let's tailor that one for a minute. Number two way to make it in today's day and age that so you can absolutely grow a viable art photography business. Become a road warrior. Go on the circuit. Meaning you are going to start doing anywhere from 25 to 35, 40 shows a year. You get the booth. You drive to the location. You pay the booth fees. You're on your feet all day Saturday, all day Sunday. You're doing the, the setup, the teardown, taking it away. But you are, you are gathering a tremendous amount of customers every single solitary weekend. Uh, email addresses, you're making sales, you're merchandising your work, totally a viable path. Uh, the difficulty is it's really hard to be away from our families. It's really hard to travel. You have to be on the road, staying in hotels, eating crafty food. Some of the shows and theaters are home runs, awesome. Some are complete duds. And so unless you're doing enough of them on balance, um, you, you know, you'll never make enough money, which is why you have to, you have to do quite a few of them. So they work very, very well. If I was trying to make it as an artist and I was in my 20s and I could I could talk to my 20-year-old self, I'd be like, look, you don't have a mortgage. You don't have a significant other. You're going to hit the show in theater circuit because it's one of the fastest ways to get there because you know you're going to have so many opportunities every single solitary weekend to show your work off, to get more comfortable selling it, uh, to merchandise it and be in that type of a situation, to make sales, uh, to gather email addresses that you can make future sales with. So there's, there's a lot to love about it. The third way, the, the, the way that we advocate, okay, is selling direct in which you retain all of the information to who you are selling to, okay? So you know who are your potential purchasers. You know who your collectors are. Um, you obviously are not paying any 50-50 split or any onerous terms like that. So you control the entire operation. And it is an absolutely fantastic way to grow an art business, made even more so by the sheer amount of buyers that we can re reach as a result of everyone carrying these things around all day. The rub is, is that you're responsible for doing the marketing and getting the word out, um, which is never, never an easy thing to do, right? And so it, 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 it is those three, the gallery model, extremely low odds, okay? The show and fair model, which which is a great model, but it takes years and work is very, very difficult, or the selling direct and learning to market. Those are the three ways to make it as an art business. Now, I love blends and hybrids of any of the three. I've never met a revenue source in this business that I did not like as long as it was legal, but you cannot do any one in lieu of the others. You need to know who is purchasing your work such that you can market to those folks in the future and grow a list of collectors. That's the ball game. Now, the beautiful thing about social media and algorithms today and sharp contrast to like let's say 15 or 20 years ago is you can you can really make a tremendous impact without having to be on the road all the time without being uh, uh, geographically hamstrung to your location okay the the social networks and the marketing that we do on them and the corresponding algorithms are very very good at saying hey this is your artwork i understand what your artwork is i'm now going to go find the people online that I already know like this type of artwork. It's an incredibly powerful thing and an amazing thing that we get to see as a result of today's uh, uh, social landscape out there. But again, the rub is, is that you have to do the marketing. So those are the three ways to make it. We obviously advocate the selling direct, selling from your own website, building your own email list, doing the marketing and building a business. But any hybrid of the three is okay. Um, Next up, the second high-level thing that we need to talk about is coming to terms with the fact that every single solitary person on this Zoom call has a marketing problem. You have a marketing problem that's not going away. No artist, no photographer ever wants to do their marketing. They never want to take it seriously. And as a result of that, it's, it's kind of like going to the gym. You know, no one wants to go to the gym either, but when you go to the gym consistently, what ends up happening, you get the results, right? For years and years and years and years, artists and photographers treat their marketing, this is quite apropos given the time of year we're in, like the New Year's resolution, right? It's like that gym membership you sign up for in January when you're going four days a week. Problem is, March rolls around and you haven't been once all month. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. This is the vicious cycle of art and photography that I see. I have been on Zoom running webinars like this, okay, since right when the pandemic started, so what, three years now. The sheer number of artists and photographers I have talked to is staggering. And let me just tell you, in every, I realize this is a little low, in every uh, a season of life, every medium imaginable uh, on this globe, on other parts of the globe, on this globe, on, on, on this continent, on other parts of the world. And one of the things that I've noticed is this Hotel California line, okay? You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. What I noticed repeatedly on these Zoom calls is folks that 
decided right now I'm finally going to take my art, my photography seriously. And they show up on one of my webinars and they're asking me their advice. How do I grow the business? How do I market it? What do I do? What do I need to focus on? And, and what I realize is that nobody quits this business. Okay. Hence the, Cal the Hotel California. You might quit. You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. You might stop doing your marketing and say, this isn't going to work for me. But inevitably, some time passes, and because that is the way that you creatives are wired, you're like, I want this again. I want to be able to build a business off my art and photography. And I bring that up in the context of just how much time you have left to get it right, and the fact that no one ever gives themselves enough time to get it right. And then what ends up happening is they quit, they try some shortcut, they try something that doesn't work, they just give up internally, they say, I should have listened to my mother, this was always going to be a hobby, and then you know what ends up happening? Boom, they're right back to where they started. And they're like, I want to make this thing a business again. And I keep seeing it. 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. I once had a 96-year-old on one of these Zooms tell a 93-year-old he was a damn kid. They were both asking for marketing advice. And so I, I find that to be like so, so profound in all of this, right? Like the gift that you guys are bestowed with as creators does not get turned off. And I almost never see the desire to create a business out of it get turned off. And the same thing just keeps happening year after year after year after year, right? It's the definition of insanity. And, and what I've come to find out, it's because everyone is running away from the real problem, which means you have to learn to market yourself, to get the eyeballs that are necessary to grow in an art and photography business. You are not going to like doing this. No one likes doing this, but it gets easier. Uh, uh, you end up getting momentum. You crash, you crash through the quitting points where everyone else just says, I don't want to do this anymore, and then quits. Once you get through that, you actually have a business on your hands. It's growing year after year. It's absolutely fantastic. You are responsible for the creations. You're able to ship those out from anywhere. You're selling direct. It's, it's a fantastic business when you look at it, but you have to solve the marketing problem. So fundamentally, what we do as a business, and I'll, and I'll talk quickly about our evolution here in a moment, is really solving the marketing problem more than anything else. Most of you guys are here and you're like, oh gosh, I need a website. I know if I just get a good website, I'll have a huge business, right? None of you guys have a website problem. Even our websites, which are the best websites in the world, are like the fanciest restaurant in the middle of the desert. Do you think anyone cares what the decor looks like, what the bar looks like, how good the food is, how good the menu is? There's no one in the restaurant, okay? And that's what the best website for all of you guys is going to be. It's the exact same thing. It's an empty restaurant. So we have to get outside of the restaurant with a bullhorn and a hook and start getting people inside. That's the marketing problem. And we need to fix it, right? And so my, my, my final closing thought in this is like, Everyone, for whatever reason, underestimates time in the short term or overestimates, underestimates time in the, in the short term and overestimates it in the long term. What do I mean by that? No one gives themselves the amount of time, the permission that it takes to actually build a business like this, three to five years in my experience, okay, which is just about any business. Ask anyone in any time. Like that's how much time it takes. And yet artists give themselves like one month, two months, three months, and then they quit. So if you give yourself the freedom of that time to know that you've got that time to build a business and you just stay going at it and you don't quit, then you win. And then the other one is that how much time you have left, right? Which is the underestimate. I mean, you have, you have several years and several decades in most cases to get this right. And so when you have that type of a time horizon, you realize it's worth fighting and, and getting the business to where you want it to be such that it's growing every single solitary year, such that you have a business that's keeping you motivated and inspired. And if you're so inclined at the end of your life, if you want to pass it on to someone, you can pass it on to someone. So in the grand scheme of things, the quick, the quick highlight, and then we'll get into the, um, the, the Q and a over our little 10 year journey, we started out thinking we were so smart because we've been at this for like 10 years. We're like, Oh, we're just going to come up with the best art, art selling websites. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have the huge business. Let's go. And so we developed the best art selling websites on the planet. And then, you know, we realized no one's got a website problem. Everyone was canceling because they weren't successful because we weren't fixing the marketing problem. Then we shifted gears to working on the marketing problems. Started off with DIY education. You know, here's how to run a sale. Here's how to price your art. Here's how to uh, post on Facebook. Here's how to write, l run a live art show on Instagram. Here's how to do an in-person fair show. And we've got these incredible guides uh, uh, with uh, uh, text and images of the setups and how to do everything and the formulas and videos. Not enough. Not enough. 
Okay, it helped, but it wasn't enough. No one likes learning in a vacuum by themselves. So then we put everything on a calendar. 365 days a year, here's what you need to do. Here's the language that you can use. Here's when we're gonna run a sale. Here's where we're gonna tease the sale, announce the sale, what we're gonna do before, during, after, how we're gonna end it, if we're gonna extend it, what to do after that. Helped, wasn't enough. Then we launched our Office Hours product. Like We are less a website company and we are more a postgraduate university that just teaches art and photography business and marketing all year long. No different than the Zoom session you're in now. We have internal ones, they're called office hours. We have nine of them a week. At any point in time, Monday through Friday, there are multiple sessions that you can jump into, learn something, and then if you need support or if you need help, you can jump into a Zoom session with someone and say, here's what I'm stuck on, can you help me? They can take over your screen and get something dialed and fix the shipping issue and this and that and all the rest. So we've had that going on for two and a half years, and that's awesome. We've got our private Facebook group, Small Wins. Everyone's in there supporting one another all the time. And what we find is it's all of these various different things all working together, and really our job is just to keep all of you from quitting, to keep all of you from turning your marketing into that New Year's resolution where you quit in March. And so we do that with a combination of support, combination of community okay you're going through this with a whole bunch of your peers that are all trying to suffer through the same stuff and learn social media marketing and learn emailing and learn technology none of which most most people like uh there's accountability hey what did you did you did you guys run that sale last week this is a huge sale it's the end of christmas sale did you know so there's accountability uh there's mild harassment, usually from me. I scream and yell at people a little bit. I do it good naturedly, but sometimes that helps. Uh, there's occasionally bribery. We will use whatever we have in our arsenal to keep our customers moving forward because we know if you do, if you can just get enough momentum going on, the score is going to take care of itself because you're gonna continue working on the business. You're gonna continue capturing emails. You're gonna continue acquiring new customers. And if we can just provide that type of an ecosystem for you, you stand the greatest chance to make it and be successful with your art, your photography business, such that your art, your photography business will map to the revenue expectations that you have set for it. And that's what we do. And that's what we've evolved to as art storefronts. And there's some other behind the scenes fun stuff that that we've been working on. We're starting to do a little bit of the marketing for customers uh, via an in-house team that we have, but we're just we're just getting started on all of it. Um, but enough of my yapping. Let's let's get into Q and A. Um, we can answer any of your questions, and then if 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 folks are still around and they want to see a demo today, which is like the test drive of our whole product, I've got one of those, and I can play one of those too. So that's the ball game. How do the questions work? If you're one of the brave ones, okay, and you have your camera on and you have a question. You can do the old school hand raise, I'll see that. Um, for everyone else, if you look at the bottom of the Zoom window, there is a way to raise your hand, digitally speaking. It says raise hand, you have to like click where the three buttons are, it says more, and then there's a, there's a way to raise hands there. Um, that lets me know you have a question, and then I, I could bring you on, um, and we can go from there. And it usually just takes one brave soul to kick us off, okay, to kick us off. Um, so if that's you and, and, and you're ready to step up, um, do I have do I have a brave one among us? I know it's a little intimidating at first. It's mildly intimidating at first. But I'm confident if we get one of you. Oh, see, Hale, that's what I'm talking about. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. I knew I could count on you. All right. And then, Peter, I'll circle back to you. Go ahead. All right, you guys, I usually prioritize the, the video ones first, and then I'll get the chat ones too, so don't worry. But go ahead. Uh, you'll have to unmute, Hale. It's um, mic icon. Yep, you got it. My question is, is this a cookie cutter type of thing? I mean, when you say cookie cutter, marketing uh, marketing to a certain extent is cookie cutter, meaning it's fundamentally just about the arbitrage of getting attention. But you, you, I didn't you, mean just just the marketing. I meant um, the whole shebang, the the um, website, mm -hmm. and then I, I guess marketing and whatever else you all do. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with it being cookie cutter. I mean, um, that's what McDonald's does, and they do a very good job at it. They do, yeah. It, um, it's it, the reasons. I mean, you, you could make an argument that some of the marketing is cookie cutter. I mean, you could make an argument that that and that's okay. A bunch of the websites look similar, but the reality is, is that, that I found is like, uh, given the subject matter material. It so fundamentally changes every single solitary business. It's sort of crazy. 
given the fact that 50% of art sales are the art themselves and 50% of the artist, that fundamentally throws the whole thing out of whack too because people are drawn to the personality of who the artist is just as much as the work, you know? So the website, the, the website really is a commodity in all of that. And, 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 and I say that as the company that provides the best websites on the planet for selling art. It's a commodity because it, it needs to do a certain number of jobs. And once it does that, it's great. There's nothing special that's going to fundamentally change and significantly grow your art business more than someone else's because they have some sort of technological feature. None of that even comes into play until you have such a high level of traffic. It's crazy. So in the very near short term, it's what you decide to do with our marketing message. Like if you didn't change anything, it would be somewhat cookie cutter, but most everybody alters it a little bit to their personality and they start putting their personal stamp on it, right? Um, so it's, there's elements of it that you could argue are cookie cutter, but it's such, it's such a mixed bag given those other variables, it's sort of crazy. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, a really, it's a really interesting question. I've never gotten that question before. Is it, is it cookie cutter? But not necessarily, I would say. And, and, you know, I think the other interesting thing too is that the beautiful thing about art sales is like, you're, you're not really in competition with everyone else, you know? Like no different than like of all the individual franchise owners of a McDonald's got together, they, were, they wouldn't be competing with one another because they all have geographic areas like, you know, that they're, they're assigned. So you're not competing with your neighbor. Everyone's helping everyone else out. The way that art and photography sells, it's, it's the same way. Like it's a bond over the subject matter material, but it's also a bond with the artist. Such that like, if your competing artist had your entire list, they wouldn't be able to sell anything to it because they don't have the emotional bond uh, uh, with that list that you would have, right? So, so it's, it's, it's interesting about whether or not you could be cookie cutter or not. You're totally sending me down a, a, a different path. But that, that, did that mostly um, answer the question? Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you worried about, are you worried about being cookie cutter? No, um, yes and no. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me like there's um, two big websites. Uh, one is Instagram and the other one is Facebook. Uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. And um, it would seem to me that I would be bumping into myself, so to speak, mm. if I've got 10,000 uh, of your customers all competing for the same thing. Ah, and, but and the, the websites are individual, so it's it's not like a, it's not like everybody is on artstorefronts.com. Everyone has their own individual unique website. Like you would be hailgay.com, right? Alice in here would be alicegarick.com. And so it's it's not like we're funneling all traffic to one giant catch-all tank. Everyone has their own unique URL, their own unique website. Um, it's it's essentially their business, and so you're not you're not competing in that capacity in the slightest. The websites though all look some. Familiar, right? Somewhat similar, yeah. But you know, do, do you do you know like this is the greatest way to think about it? And artists and photographers screw this up all the time, and and, and it's just the way that it works. If I was to ask you, what is the paradigm of how art sells in the world? Stated another way, what is what is the number one best way to sell art or photography, or the best place where something like that would go go down, right? And do you know what it is? It's in an art gallery, right? And do you ever notice something about art galleries? They all look the same. Every single solitary one of them looks the same. They have white walls, well-lit art, and nothing else. That's interesting, isn't it? Are all those art galleries cookie cutter? Or have they figured something out? What have they figured out? That put all the focus on the art, make it minimalist, you shouldn't even notice anything else, okay? And by the way, why do all museums look like art galleries too? Because that's the paradigm of how art or photography are sold. Mm -hmm. And when you realize that, when you realize that is, is someone that manages websites and someone that looks at websites, one of the biggest problems with artists and photographers trying to create their own website is they think in their head because they are so good at framing and composition and knowing what people want that that also makes them good in understanding how the web works and nothing could be further from the truth because when I see artists and photographers left to their own devices to create their own websites, there's fonts, colors, slideshows, videos, sometimes music such that if you saw the art, it would be a damn miracle. Okay, and all of those distractions just destroy your conversion rate. So I would say, yes, 
Our websites are cookie cutter and similar in as much as every single solitary art gallery in the United States is cookie cutter. They're cookie cutter for a reason and it is strategically by design because that is how you eliminate distractions and get as close as possible to the paradigm that is selling art and photography. Good answer. Yeah. Good answer. It's a crazy. Next. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy way to think about it. Well, you, if you come up with another one, you, I'm, I'm ready to go again. All right, Peter, you're up next and then Jay James. But thanks for the question, Hale. That was awesome. Uh, uh, Peter, I need you to hit the mic icon. I'll let you know when you get it. Yep, gotcha. Gotcha. Am I on? Yep. Two questions, really. One is kind of an easy one. Sure. Um, one maybe relates to the previous question. Mm -hmm. The easy one is just can you describe a little bit about the, the pricing um, options you've got and, and the other for the different service levels you have. And the other is um, how, how would you characterize people who, I mean, who really buys photography? How do you, like, what, what's the nature of a typical uh, photograph, photograph purchaser? What, what, how do they, I, I guess I don't really. Uh, yeah, I think, I think, I think I get the spirit, the spirit of what you're asking. And, and, you know, what's, what's wild about it to me is the premise in your question, whether you know it or not, is like, what is the formula you know, it's like, what if I just know what the best selling sizes are and I focus on that, I can win. If I just know what the best subject matter materials are and I focus on that, I can win, right? If I just know what the hot media type is and if I add that, if I just know the best pricing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, fundamentally underpinning all of those questions is like there's some sort of magical formula that works for everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm relatively trained as a photographer, okay? I've, I've been in the dark room for hours and hours and hours. I've studied all the masters. I understand the rule of thirds. I understand aperture. I understand judge speed, all of that, okay? I cannot explain for the life of me how some customers I have do incredibly well, and I think they're taking snapshots. And then I've got other customers, okay, that are so accomplished in terms of their photographic careers, who, what organizations they've represented that barely sell it all. And I have no rhyme or reason for it. And what I've come to figure out over those course of years, Peter, is that it's 50-50. It's 50% the subject matter material, okay? And then it's 50% you, the artist, what makes you tick, what makes you interesting, and whether or not people are going to get bonded to you. Mm -hmm. So really what sells at the end of the day is part the subject matter material, part the photographer themselves. And what do photographers almost all like to do? Same with the artists. Hide behind the lens. The artists love hiding behind the canvas, not letting anyone know a single solitary thing about them. What makes them interesting? What makes them tick? Uh, is Peter a big reader? Is that why he's got this bookshelf behind him, right? Like, even with this tiny little world into him, I at least have figured out something about him, right? But most photographers don't offer that. And when you do, you realize that human beings make buying decisions based on things that we have in comparison. Uh, uh, in, in comparison? What am I done? In common with others that we find interesting with others. And so that is a huge, huge driver of sales. And I and I use this example all the time because we have a gal that's very, very good at connecting with people. She has five thousand followers on Instagram. We have a gentleman that has over one point three million on Instagram, and the gal outsells him thirty five to one. How the hell do I explain that? And it's the emotional connection at the end of the day. That's what it is, right? And and, and also what it's made me realize that there's there's no formula that works for everyone. And I don't think there ever has been. Anyone that does tell you that there is a formula is selling snake oil, is a charlatan, is a Montebanks and run the other direction, right? All, all, all I can say is that, it, it, you know, it's not number of followers, number of sales you run per year, times the email addresses, this is the, no, no. Because I've seen it all over the place in every capacity imaginable. And it's, and, and, and it's because these multivariate equations, part the work, part the subject matter, which you'll part how good they are at marketing, part their personality that all goes into it. So what I've come to realize is the formulas are nonsense. Run away from those. The best that we can do is give you the greatest hand uh, that we can that's going to support you to find, find the way uh, and get there as best you can. Um, in terms of our plans and our pricing, we're like every other website company in the sense that we charge a monthly fee for the website. Okay, great. We're not like every other website company in the world in the fact that we are a university. That's really the easiest way to think of it. And you pay a one-time tuition to go in there. And once you get in there, you don't ever pay it again. And that goes to pay for the army of people that are going to support you for the rest of your photograph-taking life. Anytime you get stuck, seven days a week on anything, all the teaching, all mm -hmm. the events, all the everything. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have to excuse myself for a minute. Yeah, no problem. Hello? 
Oh, he's taking his own call. So I'm going to mute him, and we'll come back to him, and Jay James will move to you, and then we'll go back to Peter. Go ahead. Hey, Jay James, you'll need to unmute, too. Mic icon, bottom left-hand corner. I'll let you know when you get it. Are you there, Jay James? It usually, sometimes you have to like kind of hunt down and find it. Yep, gotcha. Uh, okay, can you hear me? I sure can. Okay, great. So, yeah, I had a question about the... Um the tuition mm -hmm. is it uh able to be covered by sales or is it required up front it is required up front but they do do some financing on it um which i know they let you like break it up into payments and such um so have you have oh, you okay. have you gotten a demo yet and asked them about that uh no i haven't i was thinking about it but uh -huh. i'm just not in a financial place to sure um yeah, like fork out for it. So that's why I'm wondering if there's any model where I can we have uh, use use sales yeah, to yeah. cover it. We yeah. have we have so much incredible information for you to be able to kickstart the business and get it up and off the ground before signing up that I think you should totally avail yourself of that. But what I would what I would do is I would I would get a demo and go through all the plans just so you can have in the back of your mind what everything costs and, and know about it. And then uh -huh. what I want you to do is I have um, – do, do you listen to any podcasts ever or, or have you listened to any podcasts? Uh, yeah, I have. Yeah. Uh, not for art storefronts but other ones. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got a really good one um, and it's called the Art Marketing Podcast and I just realized mm -hmm. now that my like little plug-in – I was going to show you on my screen but my little plug-in thumb charger is not working. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email it to you after the fact. It's on Spotify. It's on okay. Apple Podcasts. It's on everything. It has over 500,000 downloads. It's super legit. And there's a ton of teaching in there without you having to come, a, you know, even a dollar out of pocket that you can start putting into oh, place wow. right now, which I mean like right now to start growing the business mm -hmm. and getting it going. So I want you, I, I, that's what I would do. Find out what the mm -hmm. costs are so you know, right? And then get going on my podcast in the meantime. That would be my advice. Okay, and then you said there's a monthly website fee. What like is that the same for everyone? It, or? There's three different like packages, um, oh. and and there's a little bit different bells and whistles. But I think it's forty nine fifty nine sixty nine if I'm if I'm not correct. But you that's that's why oh, okay. that's why that's why you got to get a demo because I I'm terrible with all the numbers. I don't, I, I sort of stay out of the <laughs> world. Okay, great. Well, yeah, that was uh, my only question, really. I'm just curious because I'm not in the best place to start, but I believe I have the subject matter, so I'm trying to kind of meet in the middle awesome. and see yeah. what's possible. Yeah, yeah, love it. Um, yeah, so that's what I would do. And definitely check out the podcast because it will help you immediately, and I'm not kidding. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. I'll check that out. Thank you. Th thank you. Okay, next up will be Ron Greenberg. Go ahead, Ron. And Ron, you'll need to unmute too. Mic icon bottom left. I'll let you know when you get it. There it is. Yep, All gotcha. Right. Okay, um, I'm relative novice. I've, I'm mm -hmm. under my third career. Amazing. Um, I'm doing this. So, how would I? And maybe this is in the demo. Um, <clears throat> get a quick evaluation of the types of photographs that I have, and say. Uh, yeah, I think there's a market for that. I think is good enough for me. I mean, saying, yeah, oh, God, yeah, there, that would be. Yeah, uh, we yeah. we get variations of this. By the way, are you wearing a fan of the offer shirt? Yes, I am. Yeah, I love that. My parents took me that when I was such a young kid. I saw the original My, I saw the original Michael Crawford day, which, which was awesome. It's a great show. I saw it in London, and I'm going to be in London next week, and my daughter wants to go back. We've seen it three times. Oh, that's so, so good, yeah. I, I mean, I've probably seen it three yeah. or four times, too. Um, anyway, um so this is the thing there's no picking horses in this business and there never has been any picking of horses in this business mm -hmm. and a lot of people like to think that they can ahead of time go and pick horses and nothing could be further from the truth i've learned that the hard way over the years too so the point is is that you have a product you think it'll sell but you don't know for sure you want somebody i want to tell you the only thing the only person that can tell you is the almighty dollar going through the almighty credit card machine sure. that's it there's no one else so that is like the one, the one universal truth that I found out because let me tell you, I've got some people that you, they're painters. You can't even tell whether or not it's a photograph or it's a painting because they are so good at the brush and yet the stuff doesn't sell. And then I've got another guy 
that can barely paint at all that can't even keep can't even keep any product in stock because he sells out so quickly. So you have mm. to you have to approach it with that in your mind because you don't know. You honestly do not know. And I also get like every imaginable expectation out of these things that I've ever seen. Meaning everyone like what is the common like uh, 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 narrative out there that you have to have a niche, right? Like once you know what your niche is, then you'll have a huge business. Well, I've seen the antithesis. I've seen people come on that are all over the place in terms of subject matter material. Sometimes they're multidisciplined. They're photographers and they're artists and they're doing sculptures or they have clothes or whatever else. And a lot of folks will just start doing the marketing and all of that and they'll realize they're a part of the brand as much as the art and all of it sells. And so they don't really have the niche. It's just them. And then in some very rare cases, folks will come online They'll start working at the, the, the work, selling the work for about a year. And then at the end of the year, Pareto's law emerges. Pareto's law is the 80-20 rule. And so in this case, you would get to the end of the year, and 80% of your income would come from 20% of the work. At that point in time, Ron, I'd be like, Ron, I think, yeah. I think your audience is telling you you have a niche. And it's this, yeah. it's, it's this stuff. Drop the other stuff. Let's go all in on that. Let's see what happens. But in, in, anything in between can happen too. And you won't know until you get at it. And no one can tell you otherwise, aside from those dollars coming out, because otherwise it's just flattery, right? Like one of the one of the lines I love using, you know, buttons that do not exist on the AT, on the ATM machine. Your work is so good, you should sell it. You're so talented, you should start a business. You want you you got into and won a juried show, right? You got best in show at such and such. There's no buttons for any of that ATM machine. Because none of that constitutes an actual sale, right? All of it is mm. fake until you get the actual sales over the line and you get those type of, you get that type of feedback. And so that's, that's how I love to look at it and approach it. Okay. I have a second question if please, I may. Please. Um, as uh, I haven't had the demo or had a chance mm -hmm. to see what, what's in that of uh, what the fee structures are. Mm -hmm. um, but and as you're talking, I got a sense that there there's other investments one will have to make in terms of production and, um, emailing and all is that that's separate cost or it's how, how does... it's it's pretty minimal okay it's pretty minimal I think the 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 best way to look at it is like once you sign up and 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 you have everything up on your website da, 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 the only thing that's really left is the advertising cost and just about every business in the world has to advertise to grow and go yeah. anywhere how we teach you to advertise is super unconventional. It's not, it's not like any, like what anyone else thinks of advertising because we have a ton of experience in this. We know it works. So there is some costs that are, that are go along with that. And it's not paying for Facebook or Instagram ads. We actually teach you how to do print giveaways and the print giveaways is the advertising cost. And we do that to drive the side of your email list and a bunch of other things like that. So there, there are some costs there. Additionally, we sort of have a in-house services division at this juncture. So if you come on and you don't, you're like, oh man, I don't know any idea what I'm doing on Instagram. Where do I start? We can set up your entire profile for you with all the bells, mm -hmm. all the whistles, all the graphics, all the moving videos, all the best practices, all of that, right? Um, and and we have a bunch of other services al al along there um, you know, that are all a cart, but that's just if you don't wanna learn that stuff yourself and you wanna go a little bit faster. But practically speaking, once you get going, it's it's literally just your time and then the advertising cost. But the advertising cost can be as little as like thirty or forty or fifty dollars a month. You know, it it, it doesn't need mm -hmm. to be a lot. But you do got to do something. Okay. One yeah. last question Please. I think will apply to people is on these demos. Is this yeah. run through a lot of this, but more in depth, so you yeah. spend more time in questions? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and okay. you get you get every question, all the plan. Today is just like, hey, do these guys know what they're talking about, and do I trust them enough to even see a demo? So that's like sort of the 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 point of today's session. Although to be honest with you, like most of you guys are just like, okay, cool. Yeah, I, yeah, I already trust you guys. I just want to see the damn demo. Show me the damn demo. And so we're trying to figure out the, the easiest way to do it, Ron. We don't, we don't, we don't have it all done yet. But I think, I think I'll probably just play one um, at the end of this because I've got one recorded. Um, just because it is, you know, it's the holidays. Everyone's getting ready to travel and everything else. But have well, a. I'm already traveling. I'm overseas and can't. You know, I'm, I've been having trouble getting phone calls. Back the whole, and the forth. whole, the whole thing. So if if I played the demo in like ten minutes after I'm done with Adam's question, would you watch it? Oh yeah. Okay, then I'm just then, I'm, then fine. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay, and, and enjoy London too, by the way. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, great, great city. Um, both of my kids just became English citizens, actually. 
which is a story for another day. Um, Adam, yeah, my, my wife's dad's Scott. Long story, but my wife's dad's Scottish and she's a citizen. Okay, um, Adam, you're up. Hi. Hey. Can people hear me? Yeah, I sure can. All right, thanks. Um, with Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, I got on like five years ago mm -hmm. and it's, I know it's not a lot, but I went from nothing to a thousand f followers That's in great. a couple of months. Yeah. And I had, um, on average, like two, like one to 200 likes per picture. And yeah. I, I again, know that, that that's not like viral or anything, mm -hmm. but these days, if I just post photos, I fight for 20 likes Yeah, and I just, no matter what I do, I don't gain any traction. Yeah. So it, my, my question, and I know I frame this as a question, is it possible to succeed on Instagram without reels? So you, you one, in everything Instagram related, okay, these are the goal posts. And depending on what day you ask me the question, they might be over here, or they might be over here, or they might be up here, they might be down here, right? So that's big picture. At the beginning of the year, I would answer your question differently than I answer it right now, okay? And number one, you're making a ton of mistakes on Instagram. Um, and and I, I don't even have to look at your profile to know that you're doing this because I've been doing this for a long time. You, in your head, like most photographers, are you a photographer or are you an artist? Photographer. Photographer. Yeah, I think you said that. Um, you guys think in your heads that us, uh, your potential followers on Instagram, have the same powers of visualization that you do. And we can somehow see this tiny little square image that you put on there and go, oh my God, this is so phenomenal. This is incredible. But nobody buys JPEGs, dude. What we buy has three dimensions, right? Like it is a real physical item. I can see it, I can look at it. And if I went up and down your Instagram profile, how many would I have to get until you were holding an art, a piece of art? How many? The whole profile. The whole profile, okay? The whole profile. So when number one, when you're not holding any of the artwork yourself, you're essentially just showing people JPEGs all day long. And do you know what the issue with JPEGs all day long is? The whole damn network is built on JPEGs, okay? Those used to be super sweet in the early days. They are not super sweet anymore. It doesn't mean they don't, they're not impactful. You just can't do them all the time, okay? Now, are reels important? Yes, they are. But the good news is, Posts now are equally important. And what happened over the course of the last two years, I'm a little opinionated, I'm gonna give this at a high level, I'm gonna give it quickly, okay? Facebook, and by virtue of the fact that Facebook, now Meta, owns Instagram, had an utter, total, and complete monopoly on the social world. They had zero competition, okay? Competition came around, first, it was Instagram, they bought them. Second, it was Snapchat, they tried, they tried to buy them, and so what did they do? They copied their features verbatim. Third was TikTok. TikTok came around, couldn't buy them. They told Zuckerberg to pound sand, and then he just started copying them. But TikTok, for the first time, has introduced competition into the social media landscape. This is an incredible thing because it didn't exist before. What existed before was, hey, Adam, work your ass off on my platform, and then after you build up a bunch of followers, I'm gonna let some small percentage of those followers see your posts, okay? When TikTok came in, what they did to change everything is they ripped the social contract up. They said, you can come onto my platform, you can have two followers, but if you create an incredible piece of content, I will go and show that organically to thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of people. That never existed before. If you wanted that type of reach before, you had to spend the money on advertising, okay? And so now, on Instagram, if you do a good post, if you do a good reel, okay, it will be shown to people that follow you, yes, but people that fo don't follow you as well. This is incredible. This is this represents one of the most amazing uh, 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 shifts in social media marketing that's existed aside from being there in the ground level. But you have to be playing by the rules. All you're doing is showing JPEGs. You're not showing any of you holding the product. You're not making any reels. You're probably not giving us a window into who you are, what makes you tick, what you do, what makes you, in are you a dog person? Are you a cat person? You know, do you paddle kayaks? Do you drink beers? Do you like playing golf? What do you do? No one, no one has any idea because you're not sharing any of that in your profile. That's a problem, right? So you're, you're, you're discouraged because you're not getting any traction, but you're also not playing by the rules. So step one, we need to fix that, okay? Step two, yes, you do need to make some reels, but you don't need to make reels incessantly. And three, there's rules there too. And like, look, we are, it's Zuckerberg's world. We're just living in it. There's free attention there. And so once you come to terms with that, you don't take it personal, you don't get upset about it, you're like, look, this is, this is a rented land and I'm having a party over here for as long as I can and I wanna drive as much of that traffic back to my site as I can. So we teach you how to do that all year long. Thanks so much. Yeah.
Thanks, Adam. Um, Peter, all good on the on the interruption. We all get calls, brother. No worries at all. Um, if you want to keep going, I haven't muted you again. Otherwise, I think we're gonna we're gonna jump into. You have to hit the mic icon again. Uh, yep. You can go, keep going with whatever you were. Gotcha. Do. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So what I think I was gonna do is actually play a demo. I have a recorded one. We are you know, we normally like make you fill out a form on the website and and you know they send you a welcome email and give you a welcome call and all of that. But we're towards the end of the year and it's sort of just crazy town. So I think I'm just gonna play one um, for the folks that want to stay on. Um, you can stay on. Check it out. Um, it'll it'll go through literally everything, all of the features, all the back end marketing stuff, all the bells, all the whistles, all the plans, all the everything. Um, Andrea, do you have time to stay around and man the chat today too? Is she still here? I don't know if she's still here or not. We'll see if she unmutes yes, it in a second. Sorry, I can. Yeah. Yeah, I can stay. So Andrea here is a customer, you guys. Um, been a customer almost coming up two years. Extremely talented photographer in beautiful Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. Or is it Vancouver Island is the right way to say it, right? Vancouver Island. Yeah, Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Um, and so you can ask any questions you might have of her in the chat as the thing uh, rolls along. And like, look, if you've got to go, you're busy. Totally understand that. All good. Uh, but for everyone else, uh, here's Randall. Here's a good demo. And um, if you have questions after the fact, you can certainly email us or, or request one on our site. But off we go. All right. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much. Um, let me just make sure I'm sharing my screen. I believe I am, but I'm going to do two things here real quick. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much uh, uh, for everybody joining us this afternoon. My job is to walk you through everything and uh, just educate you on the product. Um, we're looking at uh, Candace Seslow's webpage here. Um, and basically, uh, let me just make sure I'm I don't see the little green bar, so I just want to make sure that I was sharing this. But um, yeah, so she's an amazing artist with us. Um, you know, we've got 20 different templates to choose from. I'm going to walk you through the front end, the back end, the features, the functionality. And, uh, you know, you're going to learn everything there is to know about this and, and more. So um, just to give you guys a little quick history lesson, I'm going to pull this up here. You just heard from Patrick. He's our director of marketing. Um, I'm one of the account executives. And Nick here is the owner of the company and he's been running, he uh, developed our storefronts uh, as a company back in uh, 2014. We've been around almost 10 years and uh, you know, Patrick in, in charge of the marketing team along with Brandon Taylor uh, and their teams, uh, they've developed a really amazing go-to-market strategy to learn the best ways to market and, and, and uh, get your artwork out there to be able to fulfill it, uh, sell it, and, uh, you know, like I said, we've tested just about anything and everything. So we know what the best strategies are. And these are the folks, the brain trust in, in, in charge of it. So like I said, we've been around for almost 10 years. Nick ran many, uh, so, several businesses uh, successful. Obviously, he ran the last 20 years prior to starting art storefronts. He ran a canvas distribution and print facility for over 20 years called Breathing Color. And so just in a, 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 a Wonderful entrepreneur uh, and uh, visionary for what we're doing. You know, he noticed quite early uh, back, I want to say back in 2008, 2009, that everything was going towards e-commerce and, uh, you know, basically um, developed a, a master program or enterprise solution uh, that will we'll check all the boxes. You're going to have all the best visualization tools to learn how to sell and market your art. You're going to have the plan that I just mentioned before. You know, uh, through almost 10 years of testing, we have a really good idea of what works and what doesn't. So we try to cre keep you on the straight and narrow to give you the best chance to sell your art. And then on top of that, we have a community, we have workshops, we have an, a, a, a complete educational component for you to become a better marketer of yourself and your artwork. And uh, and then we even have an agency that, that can uh, take some of that that work off of you. If, uh, if you're not interested in learning how to become a better marketer of yourself and your artwork, uh, let us do some of that for you. So we've got everything here that you need to be successful. All right. So uh, Candice here, um, she's a, a wonderful uh, artist. Actually, the first time that I saw her art, uh, I saw it in a reel, uh, which we, you know, obviously reels are things that we ask you to, to do to do to help drive new followers uh, to your to your business and your artwork. And uh, I saw this and I thought, man, she's got great photography and I was so embarrassed when I found out that she was actually a, a an oil painter. 
Uh, but as you can see, very, very talented. Now with this particular template, um, you have the, she's got original setup here. She's got a really nice bio uh, of herself. Um, originals, mini collection, oil paintings on paper. She's got her prints right here. So the great thing about prints is it frees you up to do more originals and these pretty much run themselves. Um, you know, we'll set you up with an archival printer. We work with uh, a couple of different archival printers that I'll talk about here in just a second. But, um, you know, these are self-fulfilled. The open editions are fine art prints. Customer places an order on the website. The file goes to the printer. It's print packaged and shipped out. And you virtually don't have to do anything. So that's what's great about it. It frees you up to focus on other things. Now, we do offer limited editions, which is a nice thing to have because, you know, if you have originals in, in prints, uh, it might behoove you to do limited editions in between the two uh, where, you know, uh, basically these are hand signed and numbered. We're the only program out there that has a, um, a archival printer process for limited editions where the printer ships it to you for signing and numbering. And then you ship it back to the customer and uh, the customer pays two to three times for that particular um, um for that particular piece. So, uh, you know, like I said, it gives your customer uh, somewhere to go. If they're not really interested in the the, the cheaper side or the, the fine art prints, uh, but they're looking for something a little bit more exclusive, you're signing the, you're, um, you're selling the, the uh, scarcity of it. They can buy a limited, a limited edition and, and uh, purchase this hand signed and numbered, or they can pony up and, and do the original, which uh, not, not everybody can afford an original. It's all about giving your customers somewhere to go uh, budget-wise on the website. Now, just below here, um, we've got tote bags, T-shirts. So she's actually got her gifts right here front and center. Uh, merch is a really big thing, uh, especially now. Uh, at this particular time, we're entering into the biggest art selling time of the year. We have artists that do 60 to 80% of their annual sales uh, in Q4. So I'll show that to you. And uh, there's no better time to come on. Uh, you know, the, the, there's the old saying, when's the best time to plant an apple tree? Five to 10 years ago, obviously. But this is the best time to get started now to move your art business forward. And we've got a plan for you. So these particular uh, items can, obviously you can have them here on the webpage or you can set them up like I've got Yasmin's webpage. She does a abstract art. And if anybody's looking at this and, and wondering if I'm gonna show photography examples, I will. I kind of flip between both. Uh, painting and photography. But Yasmin here, she does some beautiful um, abstract art. Uh, she's got her artwork, her prints. She's got Book of Commission, which I'm going to talk about here, uh, just to, so you can see kind of how she has it all set up here. Um, and then, uh, actually, I thought she had her gift shop on here separated, so my bad. Um, the point I wanted to make was just that, you know, if you want to do gifts in, in, in different things, you can actually set that up outside of uh, either the, the front page of the website or you can have a, uh, a separate tab for your merchandise. And the reason I mentioned that is some people are kind of against the idea of merchandise, but this is, this is the best time to have it if you think about it. People are looking for knickknacks, gifts for themselves, gifts for other people. Um, and, it you know, it's not the primary Thing that I'm going to talk about today, but literally it's a, it's, you know, it's a great way to uh, build your brand, acquire new customers. Some people shop small before they ever get to the larger pieces. It's all about customer acquisition and branding. And uh, you know, it's a great thing to have on your website at, at this particular time. Uh, sales of merch goes up at least two to three times this time of year. So, uh, but we'll be talking about that stuff as well. So uh, this is a photography example. This one's called Lean. I'm a big fan of this one. And this works really well for not only uh, photographers, but uh, painters as well. If you have multiple um, uh, subject matters and things like this, this one's a nice one to have because you can have each one of these as its own category. Um, so for example, if I go to Sunrise here, All right, so Sunrise, if you notice here, he's got an opening here, Welcome to My Gallery. Mindful Morning, Cypress Lake, Zen. So you've got all these wonderful pieces here and each one has its own name. Now it starts really small here, $47. Just to let you know, I mean, that it starts on the smallest size, 
Um, but we can get really, really large. I mean, and with some of the pieces, you know, we can get as large as 86 by 48 or 88 by 48. I forget. I think it goes up to 90. Uh, but um, if you notice here, the customer can go in here, select, do they want canvas, metal, wood? Um, we're going to help you fine tune the options on the web page when we build it for you. That's one of the things that we're going to talk about with this big deal and special that we have. Uh, we're going to build and set up the web page, and and obviously we'll we'll get into this stuff as to what what you should have on your web page. But uh, I'm going to actually do an 18 by 12 canvas here. Let me change this. I like to show this. And one of my favorite tools is the 360 degree viewing tool, guys, because this allows the customer to see what they're getting front to back. And I'm making this a little bit larger. They can see the wooden frame, the hanging apparatus, um, and they can even look at all sides here. So I can, this one's kind of, this one's dark, so you can't really see, I think you can see a little bit here. There we go. So I can drag and drop, the customer can see front, back, all the different wrap sides. Just a really cool feature. He's actually got his signature on, is open editions. Now, if you're gonna do limited editions, I'd recommend not doing this on your opens so that you can sell the, the limiteds with the signature and you know there's a reason for somebody to pay the extra money. Um, but yeah, very, very cool. So this feature here is great because it allows people to, if they're not uh, familiar with buying art uh, uh, online and they've only done it in person, they can literally see front to back what they're getting and it removes friction at a critical point in the process, so. All right, now um, I'm gonna go to my demo page here and this one is meant to look like uh, a gallery white wall. This is Fortune. You can have as many tabs on the, on the site as you want. You can have as many um, uh, you know, drop downs and tabs across the top of the navigation bar here. So one of the things that I like to point out is we do have a blog if that's something that you'd like to do. Uh, we do have a book and commission page. Hopefully some of you are interested in, uh, in commissions. Um, this can work for both painters and photographers. So book a commission is great because the customer only knows about what you display on the web page. And so you can put in your information, your name, your email, your phone number. Uh, do you have a story in mind for that? Um, customer can go in and put in that information, what their budget is, how they found you, how they, you know, what it is that they're interested in and how they prefer to be contacted. Once the customer puts that in, you're going to get an email and then you do your due diligence and follow up on it and even see if it's a good fit for you. Okay. Now I like to show this particular example. Oops. Uh, clicked on the wrong tab there. This is a uh, Courtney Nicole Bankhead. So uh, huge win. Uh, so this happened last uh, year um, around April, I think is what it was, but she posted in our small wins community and she was contacted by an event planner for an investment securities company to commission the view of an outside of a large hotel uh, in Park City, Utah. But the great thing about it was is that they asked her to do 150 canvas prints. The, the CEO thought it'd be nice to have a memento for their, their weekend. Uh, and, uh, you know, so basically we uh, she accepted the commission and she was to do 150 canvas prints to be done and shipped to each employee. So. As you can imagine, that's a pretty large order for a, a relatively brand new uh, uh, artist on our platform. And you know, she, I'm sure she was nervous as all get out, but the, th the great thing about it was we helped her scale it. She got it set up with our printers. And uh, and uh, the best part of it was, is that you know she said she'd heard of other corporations commissioning art for destination company events. With the commissions, you get 100% of that. So, you know, she didn't have to pay out a, a, a transaction. Uh, there was no transaction fee. Uh, it was 100% hers. And uh, the best part of it was they found her on Google and her site was only a month old. Now, we do have uh, people all the time ask about SEO and search, search capabilities. We do have uh, an algorithm that fills the meta tags, the keywords, and all the useful things that you need to have. Of course, the best way to, to have a really strong business with Google and, and search is to run a, a good business, right? You want to have, uh, you know, you want to be selling your art. You want to have, uh, you know, lots of social interaction via social media. All of those things kind of go into the formula that Google figures out where you are and where the where they're going to place you and rank you. But uh, like I said, we do our part to make sure that we the image has been disabled. So that's the most common way people like to steal images, and we we disable that right out of the gate for you. 
The third thing is, is that whenever you click on a particular, uh, or when you blow this up, you'll notice um, we've also got automatic resolution, or maybe you don't notice that. Uh, but literally what that is, is our third line of defense. Basically, when you upload the image uh, into our system, our system will scan it, and it's going to autofill all the sizes that are available for that image from the printer so that you know what you have, to, what how large and how small you can make that image, uh, or the customer, how what, what options the customer can have from smallest to largest. It's also going to create a low-res copy on the front end. We don't want people stealing your high-res images using a screen scraper, screen capture program like Snippet or, or whatever. There's several out there. So um, our program is such that it's going to give them the lowest resolution possible. It's still going to look good to the human eye. I mean, this looks good, uh, but it's not going to be something that's going to be desirable for somebody to steal and go around your back and put on. Uh, you know, they're not going to be be able to to make 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 a lot of money putting this on a. Uh, uh, a third party platform to sell your artwork. It just, you know, this is, this helps prevent that. So automatic res resolution, we've got three different levels to protect your images from piracy. Okay. All right. Now the next thing I want to show is this, this is the side by side products here. This is really helpful because it allows the customers, you know, to flip between different options on the web page. Now this is an advanced feature. So when you hear me say that, that typically means it's on our gold package. If, if, if I point something out and it's on a on a, a lesser package, I'll 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 be sure to make note of that and, and tell you about it. But open editions, um, so this is things you're going to sell over and over again and connect to a printer. Uh, we've got limited editions. I kind of mentioned that before, and then we've got originals, uh, which you know we've got people that do originals anywhere from a thousand to seventy thousand. So it, it you know it all comes down to where how comfortable you are with uh, pricing your your work and we have workshops and uh, strategy sessions that you can access in our um, in our marketing vault to learn how to best uh, create limited editions and originals uh, real quick before i go deeper into this i do want to point out cuz i kind of noticed that i didn't do this in the beginning which is we do have different printers that we work with which is super important uh Hopefully some of you have heard of Bay Photo. Uh, they've been around 40 years, I believe, 30 to 40 years. I can't remember the exact number, but um, they're amazing. And so Nick, like I said, the owner of our company ran a canvas distribution for 20 years uh, called Breathing Color. And he partnered with the very best uh, to, to be able to offer you uh, to fulfill your work. So they do everything from photographic, metal, acrylic, canvas, fine art prints, frames, you name it. It's a one-stop shop and they've got everything that you need to effectively sell and market your art. So uh, that's the great thing about these guys is they're professional drop shippers. They'll do everything in house and ship it out to your customers, uh, uh, you know, to, to be able to get that to them to fulfill. So um, graphic dimensions is another one of our printers and they're amazing too. These guys are on the, on the East coast. They're out of North Carolina and they do a lot of, a lot of the same things, canvas, fine art, fo photo paper, acrylic, metal, one-stop shop. Um, like you said, Everybody's a professional drop shipper, so I don't think it really matters what coast uh, uh, you're on versus where, where the printer is. But uh, just know that we've got some archival, high quality offers offering uh, printers to to be able to fulfill your work and 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 put your your best foot forward. The other thing we have is Guten, uh, Guten by Art Storefronts, and um, I'm going to be sent just so you know um, after the demo, I'm going to be sending out a follow up email with the links and everything. So. Um, if you want to write them down, great, but you will be getting them later in an email with the with a replay of this. So, um, but Guten is our merch printer, and I'm just going to click on the products. Guten, it's guten.artstorefronts.com, uh, and so they do everything from porcelain ornaments, which obviously as we're going into the holidays, this is a good thing to have on the web page. Uh, magnets, uh, acrylic trays, yoga mats, wall calendars, hoodies, tank shirt. Shirts, tank tops, um, tote bags, phone cases. Those tote bags are really hot. I see, I see artistic tote bags all over the place when I go to Whole Foods, uh, you know, the mall, different places. So, you know, uh, you, your artwork can look really, really nice on these. And then we've got uh, coffee mugs, throw pillows, and so forth. So uh, lots of different ways that you can not only sell knickknacks and items at your shows, uh, they can serve as promotional items to to, you know, show a thank a nice uh, thank you for to, to people to spend some real money with you. Okay. All right. So let's go back here. Um, so 
you know, with open editions, obviously we're going to pick a printer when you get signed up with us. Um, you know, like I said, you can't make a bad selection here and we'll set everything up for you. As far as the mediums, we typically recommend four to six. Um, and you know, I've got eight by six all the way to 18 by 13. This is a low res image. So it went from low to lower <laughs> essentially. Uh, not, we didn't have a lot of options to choose from, but with a, with a really nice 200 to 300 DPI image, you can get really large. Uh, and have a lot of uh, different sizing combinations here. So I'm going to do an 18 by 13. And I'm going to do a framed print. And notice how easy this is. I just went from smooth fine art paper, size, frame. I'm going to do a four inch mat. So I'm at, looking at $422. Of course, when the customer gets this, it won't have sample across the front. Uh, but literally, this is what it's looking like for that particular item, $422 plus shipping and taxes. So I'm going to do checkout here. Okay. Now, we work with three different uh, options uh, for Stripe. So uh, bear with me one second here. I'm going to do, or I say three different options for the merch merchandise. Uh, oh, sorry, guys. I said merchandise, I meant merchant. So we have three different credit card processors that you can work with. That's the better way to say it. So stripe.com, and I'll put this in the chat, and they do 2.9%. Uh, we've got authorize.net, and I believe they're 3.75.net, 3.75%. And then you've got PayPal, which is actually the largest, uh, uh, and they're 3.8%. So my favorite is, out of all of these is Stripe. I'll just quickly go back here just so you can see this. These guys are great. They do everything with, uh, they, they do um, processing for Amazon, Salesforce, Google, Zara, Marriott, BMW, WhatsApp, Shopify, and a whole lot of other places. Um, but um, they're great, you know, and they have the lowest percentage too. So, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's the best option online and offline. And uh, so anyway, I'm gonna do instant checkout here. Let's just say we have Stripe, customer puts in their information. And I think I put two of these in here. So we're gonna go back there, we're gonna do checkout. And basically once the customer puts in their information, hits pay now, the file's gonna to go to the printer and start work on that. Um, the money's going to go uh, through uh, Stripe. Stripe takes their their percentage, their little, measly little 2.9. Uh, that's how they make their money. Uh, on this particular amount, you know, it's roughly around $12, $13. The rest of the money is going to go into your bank account. The file goes to the printer. The printer starts working on the print. Uh, and then when it's ready to be shipped out, they're going to charge the card on file uh, in the system. Uh, for the cost of the fulfillment, which I'll cover in just a second, uh, and ship that item out to the to to the end user. Okay, and then once the customer gets that information, I'm mean, sorry, not that information, but once the customer gets that merchandise, then art storefronts uh, will charge their commission, which can range as low as ten and five, uh, ten percent on prints and five percent on limited editions and originals. It ultimately depends on what plan you're on, and we'll cover that at the end. So. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do real quick here, since we're on that topic, I'm going to show you uh, kind of what to expect and just give you an idea as to how we talk about pricing and, and figuring out how to sell prints. Keep in mind, um, I'm not the art mark. I'm not Patrick, one of Patrick's uh, art professional art marketers, but you know, like I said, uh, I do. Uh, I'm in uh, communication with them quite a bit, so. Uh, but they, the best information will come from these guys. But literally, they recommend a starting uh, point of 250% markup on uh, on uh, prints. This is uh, for Canvas prints specifically. So right now, we're in the back end of a live web page. William Stidham, he's nice enough to let us show his website uh, on the back end. I'm going to scroll down and find a, an example that I want to use here. So I did Canvas, breathing color. So this is a 36 by 24 Canvas, right? And I'm clicking on this here. So I've got a markup percentage of 325. I'm going to explain that here in just a second. And then when I clicked on this box, it opened up the cost from the printer. Uh, and then you've got medium markup, style markup, and price. So like I said, they they typically recommend if you're new, 250 to you know 300, somewhere around there, uh, maybe 250 to 275 to be conservative. 
I went ahead and did 305. Now it says 325, but what I actually did was I baked in an extra 20% here. And the reason I did that was, is I may, you know, we're going to have Black Friday coming up soon, Cyber Monday. Maybe I'm going to run 20% uh, off on uh, Canvas Jake Jacle prints. Why would I do something like that? Well, uh, we run promotions and things like that on the site to generate urgency and to stimulate people to purchase uh, on the website. Uh, we're going to teach you how to romance and get more people following your art and checking it out. And we're going to help. We're going to show you how to keep a consistent presence on social media. But the thing is, is that you have to be good at motivating your audience. And so uh, to purchase, otherwise you're going to have a lot of people looking at your art and telling you how great it is and not buying a darn thing. So 305% is what I put in. I baked in an extra 20%. I baked in that 20% because I'm going to offer 20% off uh, in the promotion that I'm running, maybe Black Friday or Cyber Monday. And then basically when the customer puts in that, that, that code, it's going to take 20% off the total. That's going to work me right back to my 305 that I said is my, my original profit goal. I'm not losing anything. The customer is perceiving the, that they got a great deal on that particular uh, purchase and everybody's happy, okay? So now, 325%, if you go right over here to the right, you've got medium cost. So the print for the 36 by 24 canvas is $44.98. Um, so that's just the print, okay? If you do a gallery wrap, that's $58.91, okay? So if I want a gallery wrap print, canvas print, and a gallery wrap one and a half, I'm taking these two numbers together, and the total cost is 103.89. Okay, so 103.89 is the baseline cost uh, from the printer. I've got to mark this up in order to make money. I saw a couple of questions come in. I'm gonna I'm gonna take questions at the end. Uh, we have a lot to cover, so uh, bear with me. But um, 103.89 is the the print the cost from the printer. You're gonna take each item, $44.98 times 325% gives you 146.19. So I basically multiplied the cost of the, pr the print from the printer times the markup percentage, and it gives me the markup, okay, for the print. The style or the gallery wrap, you know, this could be frames too. If you're, I was offering frames on this particular piece, it's 58.91 times 325% equals 191.44. Cost plus markup equals selling price, okay? This is what is gonna be on the website plus shipping and taxes. That's what the customer's paying, okay? Now, the great thing about this is that as you become more comfortable or if you want to test and do different things, and I did, gosh, I don't want to do that. Um, but notice how if I make uh, adjustments here, all of a sudden the cost of the item changes. So once you get comfortable with the percentages and the things that you want to do uh, on the website for the specific items that you're offering, it's easy peasy. I mean, you put it in here and the rest is history. Okay. Now over here to the right, it's 441.52. That's the cost of the item. All right. Now, if I take 2.9%, because that's what Stripe charges to process the credit card transaction, that's $12.80. So less $12.80 uh, for the processing of the credit card. That's how Stripe makes their money. The printer is going to take their 103.89. So less 12.80, less 103.89. Now, if you're on our gold package, uh, it's 10% on prints, 5% on limited editions and originals. So let's just take the 10% as a factor here. 441.52 times 10% is $44.15. Well, if I subtract uh, that $44.15 from the 1280, or 441.52 less $12.80, less 103.89, less $44.15, that leaves you with $280.63 uh, should be to the penny on that particular item. That's your profit. So um, not a bad, uh, you know, like I said, that's after expenses. Uh, so you can go up if you want to. Uh, it's up to you. The more you mark this up, the more money you're going to make. And, uh, you know, like I said, we have workshops where you can ask questions, get, get t uh, pointers and tips on this, and you get to learn from other uh, artists that are that are really successful with us along with the marketing team. All right. Um, all right. So now we're going to move uh, further along here. All right. Um, now, 
Uh, we've got open. We talked about open editions. Now we're going to limited editions. Uh, so, like I said before, this is something where you know you're going to want to. You do not want to have the same sizes as open and limiteds because you're going to sell the the scarcity in the hand hand signing and numbering of this. So you don't you know you don't want people to be able to cheap out and buy the same size on a on an open edition. You're going to want to maybe keep some of the smaller sizes, you know, and then have maybe a really large mantle piece, um, you know, so that there's there's incentive to be able to buy the the bigger piece the, to be the centerpiece. It'll be hand signed and numbered, so the customer can place the order here on the web page. And then uh, once the file uh, once you once the customer places the order, you'll go into the back end of the system. You'll log uh, you'll you'll log into the back end of the printer. We'll give you that that information, and you place an order with the printer. We're not asking you to have 50 of these laying around. You'll set a specific number. They're made to order. Customer places an order on the web page. You go in on the back end, place an order with a printer. The printer is shipping it to you. You'll take it out. You'll hand sign it, number it, put it back in. Some people like to put um, um, some people like to put in certificates of authenticity that they created or handwritten letters. They re basically package that up. You can buy your label uh, from stamps.com, something like that. If you ship via UPS, our company will give you a, a uh, or I should say our company, you get a 3% uh, discount with UPS if you if you are a member of Art Storefronts and you let them know. So like I said, um, you're shipping it back to the customer, you're pricing it at least two to three times what your open editions are, and you're selling the scarcity of the hand signing and numbering. And once these are sold out, because it'll go 49, 48, 47, until you're sold out, it'll have a sold out watermark. You're not to bring back that same size and medium and it'll say sold out on the web page. Okay. So uh, I do, how do you handle returns or replacements? If there is a particular issue with a, uh, with a, with a print, um, we do have the printers that we're working with. We have a return and exchange policy. Now that is not covered for originals or anything like that. That comes down to you. This is your business. You decide what it is that you want to enforce there. I don't recommend doing any sort of return uh, thing, return policy uh, for originals cost too much. But on a print, it's different because, you know, we're sending these these printers, these 9,800 uh, customers to these printers on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. They're going to do what's right. And so if there's an issue uh, with any of the, any particular printer will let us know, we'll investigate the, the said issue and uh, we'll trust but verify. And, and then the printers will be the first one to raise their hand and typically what they do is sh ship out a, uh, a replacement. I, I've got Andrea here, who's one of our customers. I'm gonna ask you to unmute here. I've only had this happen once or twice in two years. Um, and let's see here, let me, if you wanna unmute Andrea. Yeah, um, I'm unmuted. Can you just explain your, like your situation like that? I mean, it's, the, the printers are great to work with. Yeah. Yeah. I had a $600 canvas that when it arrived at the customers, they weren't happy with it. They said it was too dark. So I just asked them to take some pictures of it. And I sent those to the printer and explained to them that the customer wasn't happy. They looked at the file. They said, you're absolutely right. We missed this in our quality control. It was too dark. So they reprinted it and shipped it a thousand miles. And it was there within two days and there was no cost to anybody. That was good. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. So uh, we are very blessed to have Andrea. She's one of our photographers uh, and customers. She's been with us for how many, you, you a little over a year and a half now? Yeah, year and a half. Yeah. And so um, as we go along here, if you have any questions, I'll probably even ask her to uh, give some specific examples and things like what it's like to work with the marketing team, what it's like to, you know, be a part of the sessions, things, you know, the learning component. Um, uh, but yeah. Um, so anything, if you have questions, uh, you can fire those over to Andrea. How, how long do we have you today? I'm here till for about another 20 minutes. Okay. All yeah. right. Cool. Good to know. Um, okay. So moving right along, um, we talked about limited editions. Yeah, you'll ship these out to the customer two to three times uh, what your normal cost of your open edition is. And you want to have it priced in between your originals. Okay. So 
if you are a, a photographer, you won't you, and you're not doing any painting, you may just have open editions and limiteds, and then you'll have really good, nice prices on your limiteds because these are your your special edition uh, that we talked about with limited run. Uh, we have uh, photographers that are anywhere from fifteen hundred to fifteen thousand. I think Jonah Allen is is in a upwards of fifteen thousand on some of his limited editions. We've got uh, Tim Lehman, Nat Geo photographer. We've got several really, really talented photographers. Uh, so if you have any questions about limited editions, we have workshops uh, and you can ask questions of the art marketers and we can help show you how to do those. Now on originals, um, pretty simple uh, in the sense that you'll have one main image. You have four to six different thumbnails here, um, you know, that we recommend. I mean, you can do more if you want to, but you definitely want to have a, an action shot uh, of painting uh, the item if you can. Uh, thumbnail, uh, you want to have a thumbnail of the, 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 um, the palette and the colors. Definitely want to show the back, any signing and numbering. Some people sign on the front, so whatever, but you definitely want to show the depth of the painting there. Um, any sort of mixed media, uh, artists in here, you definitely want to show and highlight what's different and unique about your pieces, whether it's, uh, you know, brush strokes gems, uh, any sort of really unique medium that you're putting into your paintings, definitely uh, showcase that. It puts money on the bottom line. Um, we have the ability to do video. Um, video is, it does uh, increase the likelihood of, of, or I should say it increases the time on site and it really does help with conversions. Um, we recommend 35 to 45 seconds on video. Uh, no, not any more than that. Uh, and we Okay. Patrick just made me the host, but didn't realize that he was the one actually playing it. So I'm going to message him right now. Uh, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's coming back. One second. I got to find him here. Uh, make okay. We got it sorted out. A little technical issue. Are you back, buddy? <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is just what happens in show business sometimes. Just pretend this is a very short, brief commercial interlude. Commercial break. Yeah. Um, do you remember about where it was, Andrea? And uh, really good to have these buttons because then they can go down here. Further? Some of our most uh, moneyed uh, uh, collectors and buyers. I think it was before this. Yeah. And... We, we the templates and the things that we provide uh, when we're doing the marketing, we're going to give you a free MailChimp account up to 500 contacts, and you can use that to, uh, you know, like I said, warm up your audience and get okay, people I'll coming back for more. But I clicked on here to learn about how to customize my outgoing emails. I've got a video here that I can watch that takes me step by step through that, and I also have a walkthrough where it tells me step one, step two, highlights what I need to click. That was step three, step four. And then if this isn't enough, guys, we also have workshops where you can 